So we are back with another review here from our pro feedback platform. Uh, today, we're gonna do something a little different. Before, when I had the reviews we were posting on YouTube, I had as many of the pros gathered together at once so we could all collectively review the track, which was great. Everybody got different perspectives, but you only got to hear maybe one or two sentences out of each pro. So I'm gonna do our reviews a little differently uh, starting this month, and I want to be able to give each one of our pros a little bit more time on screen, and I really want you guys to get to know these guys because I want you to see what kind of feedback you can get from the service in pro feedback and of course uh, even if you're not a member with us I do want you to hopefully take something from these reviews that I'm posting on YouTube in terms of how to take your music and steer it in a more licensable direction again our job is not to tell you how to be creative or what chords to use or what you should do with your music but what we try to do is we try to recognize what talent and and strengths you do already have and we try to just basically push you and channel you into a direction that could be profitable for you in the licensing business. That's pretty much it. So we are not experts on music. We're not experts on mixing or mastering or production or anything like that. But what we can definitely claim some expertise on is we know what tracks get placed. We know what tracks get accepted by libraries for sure. And we know what really works for this business in the long run. And I, I started Pro Feedback because I don't want you guys to be chasing your tails for months and months and months, maybe even years thinking you have to reinvent the wheel to make licensable music because you certainly don't. You can really do amazing um, stuff with this um, service that we have here because we can let you know from day one, hey, this track is not in the right direction. You need to steer it here and here and here. And maybe you should try this and this and this to get to the point where these are gonna be more licensable tracks. So today I have Trevor uh, Llewellyn with me. He is gonna be the first reviewer that we that join us. Um, I want you guys to certainly pay attention to what he has to say. And I want you to know that Trevor has been in this business longer than me i think maybe about the same time but i i almost think that you might have gotten started maybe a year or two before i even jumped into this and trevor has been on all sides of this business he started as a composer producer and then he's moved himself up into he actually worked for a library for many years too so he got sort of a behind the scenes look at how the industry worked and now he's operating his own library he's his own publisher in this business and he's distributed by the biggest um company out there essentially in sync licensing so he has seen everything from having nothing to having a really nice situation for himself now and so if there's one thing trevor has sort of lived for the last basically 15 years it is sync licensing music so this is a track from one of our members. Uh, his name is Mark Allen, and it's an orchestral track. He primarily was interested in wanting to know if the mix was was working, um, but we're going to definitely dive into all of the elements of this track and hopefully try to provide some helpful feedback for him. So let's go ahead and take a listen to Shot in the Dark by Mark Allen. Here we go.
really cool, man. Intense energy from Mark Allen. Really cool track, buddy. It's definitely, you know, kind of a hybrid. We've got this electronic glitchy sort of thing going on there. So lots of stuff for sure that's working about this track. You know, amazing stuff. So I'm going to basically shut my mouth, though, for this review for the most part. And I really want Trevor to kind of take the lead on his thoughts and what he thought um, was working about this track and what could be improved upon it. So Trevor, why don't you go ahead and take it away, man? Yeah, all right. Um, <clears throat> there, there's so much cool stuff to say about this track. Uh, I'm gonna. I pulled up our kind of like our kind of structure of how we do these reviews on my end. So I'm gonna kind of go down the list as I normally would when I'm doing a review with some of these people. So the first thing that we usually or with the members. Uh, so the first thing that we usually talk about is structure, and you have basically the right structure for most scenarios. You've got a cool intro. You've got um, that breakdown in the middle. You kind of got it right after the intro, we get a taste of like the intensity. And then at the very end, we get the full intensity. So you kind of give, um, you use that layout to basically give an editor um, everything they may need, right? If they need to extend that middle uh, down tempo section, they can do that. You give them enough to work with there. If they don't need a big ending, you have kind of the first section uh, in the first like minute or so that they can just throw back at the end. Like they, there's so much editability with your track, which one, you can tell because it doesn't sound repetitive. Like I sat and listened and I never was like, okay, when are we going to get to the next part? Right. It was, you were taking me through some sort of journey. And that is usually means that it's editable, that you can take sections of the journey and move them around and stuff like that. So structure wise, you killed it. <clears throat> um, instruments, uh, the instruments that you use. So a lot of times people will kind of throw stuff in and they won't realize, oh, that doesn't fit. And I didn't really hear anything that didn't fit. The only thing I did notice is that I couldn't hear the like strings and I don't think there were brass, but I couldn't really hear the orchestral elements, mainly just the strings as much because the like drums were so big and the synths were so big and like the sound effects and stuff, which were awesome. But I almost forgot that like there was, there were some strings in there. I had to like really listen and they were tucked under there. Um, <clears throat> and trailer people like love orchestral instruments. And so they kind of want those, they want to hear those because then they, they feel like, oh yeah, this is a trailer thing, not just a heavy EDM or electronic drum kind of thing going on. So I would bring up the strings, uh, especially I think in the second half, you kind of have some like dun, dun, dun kind of stuff, but it's really tucked. Um, the mix sounded awesome. There wasn't anything that was really out of place outside of, like I said, maybe bringing those strings up. But other than that, like this thing sounded really good, nice and full and wide. Like when some of those hits are hitting and stuff, like I can hear those like uh, particles or like the reverb, like way out here. Um, production quality wise, again, like there was a lot of, a lot of thought going into what went into the track and where, and and like I said earlier, nothing is really out of place because of that. And then the last kind of thing that we talk about is the licensability <clears throat> of the track. And this track is more licensable than I think people, than somebody usually realizes because most people, when they think trailer, and I've realized this with some of the trailer tracks that I did in the past, when they think trailer, they're like, oh, I'm going to land like a movie trailer. And they don't realize that like there's a whole industry of like places that trailer tracks get used for that we don't even realize happen like sports promos or even just um like sports highlights sometimes they'll just use trailer tracks in a sports highlight kind of thing and you won't even realize it because they're watching you know some football play happen and it's like dun 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 dun, dun. you know it's like got this trailer thing going on and that's a cool little placement that your trailer track is getting and you didn't even realize so like and the fact that the the drums are so big this kind of has a beat it has good movement you yes it will land in a trailer but this kind of track will probably land like will probably get you more placements and most good trailer tracks will get you more placements in non-trailer places and then it's cool to kind of get a trailer as well because there's there's way more sports highlights there's way more promos there's way more like ads and stuff than there are trailers and so like another example is um is those they're called promos where like a, like let's say a reality show is like this coming season on you know people dating in a dramatic way or whatever the show's called right it's like chloe gets in a fight with joseph and then do 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 right and they will use this to make it sound seem really epic and then you watch the show and you're like oh that was kind of epic or whatever right but they'll use this kind of stuff for that 
And, <clears throat> and so, yeah, so this track kind of fits all of those possible uh, placement uh, avenues because it's like heavy. There isn't um, like, cause you could, you could lean into certain moods. Like you can lean into scariness or you can lean into like, um, like if you had some big brr, brams or something that leans more into trailer and then kind of like out of sports a little bit. And so there, there's things that you could have, that could have narrowed it and you didn't, which is good because this really makes a broad spectrum of like potential placements that aren't just trailer. So um, yeah, I want to know what you think though, Jesse. That's yeah, that's great. And I'll, I'll just add to what you said there. Uh, video games, video games use this kind of stuff all day long, right? You're absolutely right. So there's a lot of stuff that this could be used for. Um, yeah, I would pretty much agree with all of your comments. I think for me, um, this is where the subjective opinion can differ from pro to pro. My concern for this track was I really like this glitchy thing you had started off in the beginning here. You know, it's really done and bah, it's kind of had a beat to it. It's really glitchy, really awesome. And then we kind of went to this really subdued section took a break and then went to another subdued section. So to me, it felt like I kind of wanted to hear more of this glitchiness. I really liked this thing building and building and building. Sorry, you probably can't see my mouse there on screen, but um, I, I like to see this part build, 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 build. And then maybe instead of having this kind of quieter section here in the middle, uh, maybe start throwing a little bit more of the orchestral elements on top at that point that could help build this. Then when we crash down to this more mellow part, it feels more dramatic. So my just, a subjective opinion on that is to see like I want to hear things build 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 and then we just need to like rest and this one had a slight build and then a rest and then a deeper rest so it just felt a little bit awkward it definitely is like editable as Trevor said so if they needed this version of kind of a mellow part or that version they had it but in terms of it being kind of listenable in terms of like getting my attention to push me all the way through the track that was the only part of it that felt a little bit awkward and then I would also add at the end of the track I felt like this entire last half of the track is one big crescendo. We're just building, 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 building up into this back, this final boom hit, um, which in many ways, that's what you're supposed to do in sync licensing. But you had like a release here in the beginning, like this beat right here. In fact, I'll turn off. Uh, let me play it here again. Uh, this beat you had built up. Now it's pretty minimal. There's not a lot musically going on, but it has these really cool, you know, buzz saw sounds. It's just a very industrial, awesome thing. Uh, compo compared to the end of the track. So there's a little bit of that beat, but the music is kind of bum, bum. It's lifting up, lifting up, lifting up. And there was never quite a full release at the very end. And for me, I wanted to hear this big beat thing come back in almost treating it like almost like a hip hop track, right? It's got this, or maybe like a Nine Inch Nails track. So it's got this beat that's down there, but there's also like a musical melody that sort of seals the deal and it becomes the final chorus of it. So I felt like we almost didn't have a final chorus. We just had this huge epic crescendo at the very end of the track. So I think it can be licensable. It's probably not worth doing a whole rework on this track, but it's definitely something to just think about for a future track. I think to have some sort of a release section, um, especially in the trailer world, you're gonna wanna have that big triumphant thing and you didn't quite get there with this one it just it has a big 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 build up and then boom a crash at the end but across the board sonically amazing great mix um well structured as trevor said adding these elements uh adding the intensity as we moved along so you're doing pretty much everything correctly these are probably just little tiny uh tweaks you want to make for the um the structure next time so thank you so much for uh, submitting mark i hope you found these uh, notes useful and for everybody else hope you learned something from this and if you want feedback like this from somebody like trevor or myself uh you do need to join us in pro feedback so i encourage you to check us out there's a link in the description box below where you can learn more about its service and uh, what it's all about as with all of my services and products it's a money-back guarantee for 30 days so you can literally join us get a review on your track if it's not helping you if you don't feel motivated if you don't feel like it's adding any more clarity just cancel email me i refund you immediately and you can cancel anytime of course so i am really making sure that this is as, as risk-free as it possibly can for you guys and from the testimonials and the feedback we received from current members who have been with us for the last six months um, they've been seeing some amazing progress with their work just by having this one-on-one -on -one interaction with us and just having somebody taking the time to play their track out and give them notes just like you're seeing here on this video. So if that sounds like it'd be, like it'd be useful and um, motivational for you, I encourage you to join us. So the link will be down below. So Trevor, thanks so much for your time today, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.